I'd swapped with Rosemary, because Rosemary was meant to be preaching today, and completely forgot <laughs> that it was me. Um, but I got up this morning and thought, oh, I think I'll try some cr- what they call um, art journaling. And uh, I sat and did that for a while and looked at some other things. and. I was going through my papers and I saw the, the rotor and I went, oh, okay. <laughs> what am I going to do? And it was like God said, but I've already given you it in your art journaling. And so, um, let me, can I turn that around? What I got was creative healing. And... What I felt was, it's to do with being in the presence of God. And when I was doing it, I, it was, I was actually painting it upwards. But it feels like this tremendous cascade of like the presence coming down. And when we come together as foreigners, we, we actually actively go into the presence of God. That's what we do. And I just felt this real, I don't feel it very often, like a passion of, it's about being in the thing God is doing and is pouring out now. He's, he's actually pouring out. And there's a big battle that goes on when we're, whenever we look consciously to be in God's presence. Because our minds receive a lie that for something to be true and trustworthy, we have to understand it or agree with it, or both, you know. And, you know, I'm not gonna list all the things in the world that we don't understand or agree with, but, you know, you just have to think about ultrasound. I've kind of got the concept, but I don't really understand it. Or a loyal friend. You know, you don't totally understand what's going on there. Or how a bee flies, even the aerodynamic aerodynamic engineers don't understand how a bee flies. <laughs> so even in the natural, you don't have to understand something for it to be true and good. And in Genesis 3, 8, hi Lisa. <laughs> um, it talks about, let me just find it, Genesis 3, 8. It says, after Adam and Eve have eaten of the apple, no, sorry, the fruit, it says, they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God. So they actively took themselves out of the presence of God because of shame and guilt. And God hadn't rejected them. In fact, he'd come down into the garden that he'd planted in Eden and he was walking towards them. And he stopped because he always gives us free will. Because he could have gone, oh, I'm here. <laughs> Pounced on them, found them. But he didn't. He went, you know, Adam, where are you? So they, he, Adam and Eve, could respond His desire was for them to be in his presence. And it's still his desire for us to be in his presence. In Acts 3, 19, Peter talks about the times of refreshing that come from the presence of God. And that, I think, was what God was saying today. Not just for us here, but there's a season of refreshing, of coming into the the time, the presence of God, I mean, one of the, um, the f- festivals, the Jewish festivals, is the Festival of Tabernacles. Now, the other ones have been, you know, fulfilled with the, the baptism in the Spirit and all that. But Tabernacles is about God dwelling, you know. He, he inhabits and dwells with us. 
And that's still to be fulfilled. And I believe that there's um, the presence of the Lord brings creative healing and not just creative healing for physical and emotional things, but healing of the creative, the creative people, because the wounding that we have, and all of us have it to some extent or not, hinders the creative process. If you're not healed, you know, it talks about out of the, the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what's in there? will come out in what you do, what I play, what you paint, what you create, what you write. So our journey is a sort of like a twofold journey of not only knowing God, but getting the healing, becoming aware of the places we need healing. And this is, again, what I felt <laughs> this was saying was, sometimes you just need to step into the presence like we do, and God does the healing. And I felt him saying that you're not here on earth to fight. You're here to administer a battle that's already been won. Legally, it's been done. It's been finished on the cross. That was it. No questions asked. But sometimes it's like we get swept up in feeling that we have to battle. We have to get through. We have to do it. And there's so many symbols in the Bible of, you know, just walk around that city, praising. God does it. Just, just send the musicians out in the front. Or just stand and see what God will do. And he confuses all the enemy. And it's almost like there's hidden pictures in the scriptures which we don't see. Do you remember those old 60s pictures? that looked like nothing and until you stared at them and then eventually you could see like a hedgehog or something in it. Sometimes the Bible's a bit like that. You can look at it and look at it and know it and, and it takes God and the Spirit to reveal a hidden truth that you've not seen. And you know, John 5 says, you search the scriptures because you think in them that you will have eternal life and they bear witness to me but you will not come to me that you will have life. So again, he's talking about not just knowing the scriptures, but coming into his presence to find life. And um, being in the presence of God is being in the sight of God where he sees you and being before him. And it's been a privilege really to be part of worship where we go into the presence of God and he does it all, he does all the rest. He just comes and we just flow with what he does. And it says God inhabits the spontaneous, the tequila praises of his people. He inhabits the creative response to him because he's always wanting that two-way connection. It's not just I'm gonna do this or us going, we're gonna praise you God. There's a, there's a two-way flow, and God inhabits it, and he, it's a response, and we can do it with music and art and singing and, and writing. And it, I, I believe that the things that we do in response to him carry that presence with them. Even when you say you've painted something, when it goes, it's still carrying the presence of God because it came from a spontaneous place in response to him and has his anointing on it. But in 1 Corinthians, it says, the natural man receives not the things of the spirit, but they are foolishness. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. And there's a kind of a an emphasis I felt God was saying is that to remind us that if we make the mental mind, the learning, the ultimate in our walk with God, we immediately exclude more than half the earth's population who don't even have a Bible, have no way of studying. And we exclude Abraham, who was a sun worshiper and had no scriptures. 
you know, if we're saying the mind and understanding and study is the only thing, it's not that it's not important, it is, but it is with the spirit. It's the working together of the word and the spirit. And um, I felt to say, if you, if you felt you wanted to do it, you can. If not, don't, that's perfectly all right. That we could just do a thing about talking to our minds and talking to our spirits. Because quite often, the mind is in ascendance and the spirit is, oh, an afterthought, you know. And we, if you want to, we could just sort of put our hands on our head and go, mind, you've been a good servant, but a poor master. Come under my spirit. So I don't know if you feel like just saying that. And you don't have to if you don't want to. It's like, mind, thank you for being a good servant, but you are a poor master, and I command you to come under my spirit. And spirit, I thank you that you will rule with Jesus in my life. Amen. It's, it's a, a sense of really getting um, almost like the army analogy, trained in seeing in the spirit. We are at a certain level. Some of us are you know, further on somehow. And I feel God's sort of encouraging us, come on, you know, go for it a bit more. Um, I want to ask you a question. Where, where do you see me? Where do you see me? Any answers? <laughs> He's bold. Where, where do you see me? Were you? Yeah. Where you? Yes. Not, not in the spirit realm, but just na- in your natural. Where do you see me? Ha <laughs> ha. Good man. Good man. You, actually, you don't see me here. You see me here. Light reflects off me, hits your eye, goes into the back of your eye, sends messages to your brain, and what you actually see is in your mind. And it. <laughs> but because we've had lots of experience of knowing that if I go like that, it's out there, so I'm, okay, I can see that, that's out there. Although I'm seeing it in here, my, my experience has told me it's actually this distance from me. And we've built that all up over the, all the years that we've been. And we need to do the same thing with the spiritual eye and put it into a stronger place even than our natural eye and what we're seeing in our natural. I mean, obviously we have to see the car that's about to run us over, (laughs) but there's more to it than that. There's about seeing with our spirits. And, uh, you know, you know the scripture, it says, no man has seen God and, and lived. I'm just gonna ask a question like a Hebrew teacher would. Do you think that means nobody in the physical has seen God because physically being in the presence of God you couldn't stand? Because I know in the, in the spirit I've experienced and seen what I believe is God and I haven't died. It's a question. It's one I'm working on, you know. It's like more depths of the scriptures, more depths of spiritual understanding and being prepared to ponder questions of, hmm, I don't know, didn't think that, but maybe, let's think about that, God, and I have shelves, you know, shelves of, I know that Jesus is the Son of God, I know he was a virgin birth, and I've got other shelves of, uh, maybe, sure, and others, I have no idea what that scripture means, yeah, (laughs) about the man quartering his wife into 12 and sending her off to the tribes, you know. But that's all right, because we'll always be with something that we don't, we don't understand. But the emphasis God is saying, 
I believe, in this creative healing thing is to grow in seeing the spirit, in the spirit, and seeing the spirit, to come into the presence of God for that healing, to receive creative healing in his presence. So that's what I felt he was saying today.